Matthew chapter number 7, verse number 24. Very simple message tonight. Therefore, whosoever heareth these sayings of mine and doeth them, I will liken him unto a wise man which built his house upon a rock. And the rain descended, and the floods came, and the winds blew and beat upon that house, and it fell not, for it was founded upon a rock. And every one that heareth these sayings of mine and doeth them not shall be like unto a foolish man which built his house upon the sand. And the rains descended and the floods came and the winds blew and it beat upon that house and it fell and great was the fall of it. Literally, in, in Greek it would read, and very tragic was the fall of it. Very simple tonight. Weathering life's storms. Weathering life's storms. Can we lift up our hands to heaven one more time? And can we believe God in this house? Father, I thank you. I thank you for this church. I thank you for these people. And I thank you for this time that we come together, God. And I thank you for this opportunity. An opportunity, Lord, to talk with you and to hear from you. And I pray, Jesus, move in every aspect of this service tonight and do meet us around these altars and have your way in this house. And I pray, God, deal with us this week. Oh, God, open up our souls to hear your divine voice and let us say it was good to have been in the house of the Lord. And I praise you for this. And I do give you honor in Jesus' holy name. I do pray. And everyone said, Amen. Shake hands with somebody as you're being seated tonight and tell them I'm glad to see you in the house of the Lord. Beloved, hear me this evening. I believe we are facing a very serious problem, perhaps not like never before, even inside of our own movement. Namely, it would be backsliders, if you will, dropout disciples, one man called them. But people that at one point they were in, but a wind began to blow. And next thing you know, we don't see them in the house of God anymore. Pastors are literally pulling out their hair, wondering what can I do to make sure that that person would stay on our pews. There are games, there are gimmicks, there are everything out there underneath the sun. You can find any book you want to find on a thousand and one ways on how to get somebody to come back to your church for one more Sunday. But beloved, hear me, when it all boils down, when you begin to scrape everything away, why is it, Brother Zane, that some people can stand the test in the storms of life and some people do not, very simply put, some have a very, very weak foundation. Some are building their life on sand and others are building their life on the rock of God's Word and the truth of God's Spirit. And there is a difference on how you build. Can you say amen? There is a difference on what you put into your life and how you begin to form that soul and how you begin to form your spirit. Day in and day out, dear friend, you are building your life. I learned a long time ago, it's not nearly the size of the crisis as it is the size of the Christian. But the whole I've seen people... And man, I mean, a a wind blew against them. A storm hit them. Trials came. And they stood like a rock. And on the other hand, I've seen some people at the faintest little breeze came against their heart. And they found themselves out of God's will. And out of God's house. And out of God's... Oh, are you hearing me tonight? We have pulled out our hair. We have blamed ourselves. We have beat our own chest. And said, what could I do to change that? Friend, hear me. No person can make you serve the Lord. No preacher can make you serve God. No song is going to keep you in the house of God. You've got to determine, I'm getting on the rock. I'm doing God's will. I'm going to do it. I'm a student of history, a student of nature, if you will. I watch him, Brother Prescott. I I just observe, I look. Why does that man do what he does? Why did that person act the way they did? I have wondered and pondered. I believe there are things under the surface that you and I don't even see that truly form the foundation of those 
hearts. Oh, heaven help us tonight. Friend, hear me. I once heard a story about a... a, a, a it was an old dump, an old trash dump. And a contractor came in and he bought up that land and filled it in with dirt. And very cheaply, Brother Barty, very quickly, he began to build houses on that land. And sure enough, new people began to move into those homes. But after a while, they began to see cracks. They began to see hard things begin to split apart inside of those homes. Now, Brother Pete, all those newcomers, they didn't know why those homes are falling apart. But if you was to ask any old timer in that community, they'd tell you, I know why that home's falling apart. They'd say, because that's the home that was built on trash. Heaven help us today. Every day you live, you are building your home. Every place you go, you're building your home. Words that are said inside of that house. Big things, little things form a foundation for who you are. Every decision you make, will I go to God's house? Will I pray today? Will I seek the Lord? Will I? That's what you're putting. You're putting that into your house. You are a direct result of everything you've ever put in your heart. You are a direct result of everything that's ever come into your life. Everything that's ever come in. Everything that God has ever purged out is what brought you to this place tonight and what you are. Let me tell you something, friend. When we were to look at these two men, you know, Jesus speaks about how these men hear God's Word. Whosoever heareth these sayings of mine, I want to remind you tonight, Jesus is not speaking to two complete different people. We get in our mind, here is this one man, Clean and crisp. And how do you do, brother? I mean, he may even have King James English when he grants thouest. God blesses thyself. And over on this side, we get this guy. Man, he's pulling back his ponytail. I mean, son, he's walking around in his shortest shorts. And we're saying, now that's a man that's building it on sand. No, sir. Both of these people are hearing God's Word. In fact, if you was asking to either one of those two men, I can assure you, both of them would have looked at you and claimed Christianity in some sense. They would have both claimed to have been followers of God. They both would have claimed to have been a part of the local church. Look at the houses built in those days. Now granted, there was an upper class society, sure more affluent, more finances. But for the most part, most of those people built the homes the same way. I mean, you're going to have this room, you're going to have that room, you'll have your kitchen over here, you'll have your roof and so on and so forth. Most of those homes looked exactly the same. But there was something underneath. There was something, help me God, that not even man's eye can see. Heaven help us and not, not even man's eye could see. Not even man's eye could see things that were deep inside of that heart. Things that I didn't even know was there. Things that you didn't know was there. But when that storm hit, you looked at them and it blew them a thousand miles away. Friend, the reason they left is there was some sand where nobody could see that dirt. Jesus speaks of rock builders and rubble builders. Jesus speaks of men that say, Lord, put in me every day a strong foundation. I have seen young preachers, and these other pastors can tell you here tonight, I've seen some young preachers, man, they come out of the starting gate, and buddy, I mean, you can't stop them. Everybody's got to have them. They're the greatest, latest thing. They shoot up like a rocket, but they fall like a rock because there's nothing there to keep them. Sometimes trials can be your best friend. To let you know what your foundation is really made of. Trials. Trials don't make you a champion per se. But they reveal if you've got what it takes. 
They don't force you to be that. But what it does is pulls away that cover and shows you yourself. Listen, anytime God begins to ask you questions, it's not because God lacks information. When He looks at Adam and says, Where art thou, Adam? It ain't because God doesn't know. Adam wants, God wants Adam to know. Adam, where are you? He wants Adam to see that. He wants Adam to answer that question. When God puts you in those circumstances, those questions arise. It's not so God can figure it out. It's so that you can see you. Am I still going to serve God? Am I still going to put Him first? When the wind blows, is He still number one to me? Well, Brother Zane, when I was 17, I went to so-and-so camp meeting, and God baptized me in the Holy Ghost. And I'm 67 now, and I ain't been filled since. Friend, you got a weak foundation. I said, you got a weak foundation. Don't you pull me back 40 years. I want to know, is there an up-to-date experience with God? We say, well, brothers, ain't not know it. Paul said that I might know Him. Paul looks and says, now I know it, but not like I want to. Jesse, I've been praying now for weeks. God, I worship you, but not like I want to worship you. Lord, I pray, but not like I want to pray, God. Oh, I hope you don't lose confidence in me. I'm just really bearing my heart with you tonight. I'm telling you, Brother Barty, I want to know that whenever it's my turn in that trial, whenever it's my time in that fire, am I going to walk this thing or am I going to find an easy road out? Lord, help me. You say, Brother Zane, I know all there is to know about God. No, sir. You are a liar, sir. Ain't none of us in here tonight that knows Him like we could. Heaven help us. In 1492... Christopher Columbus found North America 500 plus years ago. As of the beginning of the 21st century, there's still over 10,000 lakes in Canada that still don't have a name. Don't tell me there's not more land to take. God help us. I may have knew Him years ago, but I'm still walking with Him. I'm still learning of Him. I'm still learning every day. And as I learn, I grow in God. And as I grow in God, that foundation becomes strong. And when that wind blows, yes, there may be heartaches. Yes, there may be pains. But I'm going to survive it and live through it and let God God be God! And then the man looks and says, No, listen. You don't have to have all that rock building. It's time consuming. There's nothing glorious about it. Or they might not even ask you to sing a special for a year. (laughs) Is that the only reason you would go to a church? Is the only is the only reason you'd change membership is because they're going to put you in some silly position. That's a that's a weak foundation. That is a weak foundation. That's a foundation that's sure to crumble. That tells me that if they don't give you your way every step of the way, you're going to throw your sucker in the dirt and go to the next church. That tells me the first time somebody says something to you that you don't like, you're going to cross your arms and roll out your bottom lip like a window shade and say, say amen to me, somebody. That's a weak, that's a weak foundation. I don't pay my tithes because just because I love my pastor. I do it because it's God's Word. I said I do it because it's God's Word. The foundation principle is, I want to be pleasing under the Lord. I actually heard, uh, heaven, heaven, I sure didn't mean to say this. Enough. I actually heard someone say not too long ago back, say now so and so, he's not preaching right now, but this church would be open. And you know what? It may be good for him to go take this church even though he's not really where he needs to be with God, because that may give him incentive to really stay in there and pray. I said, you are a fool. You are, 
You Listen, friend. If the only reason you come to church is because of your title, you've got a wrong foundation. If the only reason you come to church is just because you teach a Sunday school class, that's a weak foundation. Let everything be stripped away from you. Would you still walk in this house? Would you still raise up holy hands? Would you still shout for victory? If nobody knew your name... I gotta be. I realize I'm getting out in alligator water when I say this. I appreciate men getting in a good environment. Okay, don't don't take me wrong. Don't misinterpret me when I say that. But friend, hear me. God lets us know tonight. If you're going to do His will, if you're going to survive those storms, you've got to hear and do. So if all it is is just an environmental change for you, you can move to China. And I promise you the devil's going to show up in a bowl of rice somewhere. <laughs> oh, you know what? I know what happened and over here, but he's promised me we're going to move to a whole new city, and I'm sure that'll take care of the problem. Not if that problem's still in his heart, it won't. It's a foundational problem. Foundational. Adam and Eve are in the Garden of Eden. And they fall. It doesn't get much better than that, guys. So if all it is is just you coming in to a different environment, that's not enough to maintain victory in your life. You can walk into a monastery. That will not force you to be holy. I'm not making an excuse to go to no worldly church. You know me better than that. But just because you walk into a church and says, Holiness, holy church, doesn't force you to be a holy man. You heard about that one man, Brother Barty. He got so disgusted. He thought he said he'll join a monastery. And every year, they gave him two words. At the end of that first year, he went to a superior, and they said, uh, okay, you can say your two words. The man looked, he said, bed's hard. Okay. Come back the second year, said, okay, two more words. Food stinks. Comes back the third year, they said, okay, two more words. He says, I quit. Superior took off his glasses and said, well, you might as well. You've been here three years and done nothing but complain. Say amen. Well, some folks, I don't care if it's six words or 60,000 words. Come on here. I don't care if it's two churches or 2,000 churches. They, the one man said they wouldn't be happy if their ice cream was cold. Friend, it's a hard issue. There's something on the inside. I don't care if they do nothing but play fast songs or slow songs. I don't care if they do let you take up an offering every third Sunday. There's something wrong inside of that heart. you got to get it right with God or you're never going to be happy in the Lord. Jesus says, you want to survive the hard times. Listen to what I say and do what I say. Verse 24, therefore, whosoever heareth these things of mine and doeth them, I will liken him unto a wise man who built his house upon the rock. I'm telling somebody tonight, you're going to survive life's storms. You're going to have to erect a sturdy building. I'm a sure foundation. Something tells me, Brother Prescott, that on that day there just had to have been a man there hearing those words and stayed with him for all of those years. Something tells me that James probably had to be there for. If you'll read over in his epistle, he says in verse 22 of his first chapter, to be doers of the word. And not hearers only, deceiving your own self. If any man comes to the house of God and simply hears the Word of God, but does not do the Word of God, you are fooling yourself. 
whether you know it or not, you are creating a spirit inside of you that every day begins to accept rebellion just a little bit more. It may not be a monster the first service. We give it time and it'll get out of hand. You never keep rebellion in check. It always grows or it has to be destroyed. Chapter 2 and verse 14, he says, What doth it profit, my brethren, though a man say he, is, he hath faith and have not works? Can faith save a man? Now, Brother Zane, you have to understand, preacher, I'm saved by faith alone. Nobody in this house is questioning whether or not works save a man. But you hear me right now. Though you are saved by faith alone, the faith that truly saves is never alone. If it's true saving faith, it is always accomplished by the good works of God. You will never show me a man that has true saving faith that does not walk out a different man. You do not walk in and simply say, I am recovering sinner. No, sir. You either set free or you're bound in sin. You either delivered or you're still on your way to torment. God, give us hearts again and will make God's Word applicable and say, Lord, don't let me just hear it. Let me do it. Let me apply it. Let me live it. Lord, let it be what I am. Someone say, man. I'm convinced. The reason so many people are so wishy-washy is because they're not applying God's Word in their everyday activity. That's right, Brother Zane. You nail those Baptists down the road. I'm not talking to any of them. I'm talking to us. Come on here, don't you look at me so sanctified. If we're not applying God's Word every single day, there's going to come a day you're going to be blown away. If you're not applying God's Word and who you are and what you are and saying, Lord, be Lord over my life, you cannot make Him potentate on Sunday and paper boy on Monday. He's got to be King. He's got to be Lord. He's got to be everything. Oh, but preacher, we're so orthodox. Is that what saves you? It's just because you happen to know what page 180 is and page 130. Just because you happen to know, keep on the firing line without having to look at the book. Let me read your scripture. I love, I, I love this. Chapter 2 and verse 19 of James, Thou believest that there is one God, thou doest well. The devils also believe and tremble. That word tremble, frissos, uh, frissos, it it, it means to, to bristle, to literally make the hair on the back of one's neck stand straight up. Friends, the the devil believes in one true living God. It doesn't mean he does what he says, but the Lord tells him. You realize that for the most part, if you were to look at the average membership requirements in the United States of America for church, if you were just to go down that list of membership requirements, do you realize that the devil would qualify for active church membership in most of our churches? Uh, uh, Mr. Devil, uh, we appreciate you coming to our church. We really do. Uh, uh, Mr. Devil, do you, do you believe in, in one true living God, eternal existent in three persons, namely Father, Son, and Holy Ghost? Why, well, sure I do. Uh, Mr. Devil, do, do you believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God? No doubt in my mind, he said. Uh, uh, Mr. Devil, uh, do you believe that he was virgin born and do you believe that he never sinned? Well, certainly I do. Well, Mr. Devil, I'm telling you what, you things are looking real good. 
You are the type of person that we really want in this church. I mean, that is just as sound and as orthodox as it can be. You know what? We're really a church on the move, and we expect our members to be active. Well, would you like me to be a part of the choir? Well, yeah, we'd love to have you there in the choir. Would you like me to help out with the young people? I would love to get close to every one of your young people. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. He would. You could look at the devil and say, Mr. Devil, do you believe this is God's Word? The devil would look at you and say, yes, this is God's Word. But here's where the rub comes. Mr. Devil... Are you going to do God's Word? He begins to shake. He begins to scream. He says, no. Friend, what's the difference between you and the devil if you don't do what God says? My preacher, I believe this book cover to cover. I believe it covered. It's not a question of whether or not you believe it. It's a question of do you live it? Do you apply it to your life? When it speaks of forgiving one another, is it applicable? When it speaks of putting God first, is it applicable? When it speaks of not forsaking the fellowship of believers, is it applicable? Do you apply it to your everyday walk? Young people, is this, just, is this some antiquated book? But on Sunday morning, you want to make sure you don't look a little out of place for that carrying one. Or does this book still mean everything to you, son? Do the words in this book still warm your heart? Do you still bring it close to your chest and say, God, please let me live it? God, please let this be in me. But just be in me, God. Not just around it. Not just familiar with it. But God to live it. Oh, God to hear it and to live it. To let everything be it. Lord Jesus, let my life be that light. Well, if it is, it ain't just going to be because you know John 3.16 with your mouth. It's going to be because you experience it with your life. Say, man. You're going to be on the rock. You've got to erect a sturdy building. I do that by hearing God's Word and doing God's Word. You know what? i got a lot more to preach. But let me just start pulling it on down. It's as far as I need. I'm not asking you, is this your first service? I'm not asking you, did you even grow up in Sunday school class? I'm asking you, are you applying the principles of God's Word to your daily life? I'm trying to come in for a land. You give me just a minute. Expect a stormy blast. Verse 25, the rains descended, the floods came, the winds blew and beat upon that house. It's amazing. Verse 27, speaking of the other man's building, it says the same word. The rain descended, the floods came, the winds blew and beat upon that house. Friend, it wasn't that one of them had storms and the other did not. Just because you got saved doesn't mean you're away from storms. Peace is not the absence of your problems. Peace is the addition of Jesus Christ in your daily walk. You say, Lord, I have peace, even though I do have a storm. It spoke of the rains coming down. That's problems from above. It spoke of the floods coming up. That's problems from beneath. It spoke of the winds that were blowing. That's problems all around. And wind blew against him. And wind blew against him. And wind blew against him. And they stood. Not just because they had every preacher's CD. But because what they knew out of God's Word, they were applying their life. Say it, preacher. Okay, I will. Some of the biggest spiritual space cadets out there have everybody's book, everybody's CD, 
They run back and forth from pillar to post to get somebody to huff and puff and blow all over them. But they simply will not apply God's Word in their own heart. Teach. I don't care who we are. Storms come. Storms come. But it's what I'm built on. Sister Eric and I, we were in the state of Florida. We were preaching revival that week whenever Hurricane Katrina came through our hometown there in the Gulf Coast of Mississippi. I called back to Mobile, Alabama. I asked my mother. She was staying there. I said, now, Mom, do we need to cancel revival and come on home? Brother Hall, she said, no. She said, of course, it's just Eric and me at the time. She said, no, that'd be two more beds we'd have to find, two more mouths we'd have to feed. You just stay over there, finish your revival. I did, but then after that, I, I canceled out of everything for a month, and I come back home. We got back home, and, uh, of course, our home church, as you know, it was destroyed because of that. I went over to my brother's house. He lives three houses down from the water. He shouldn't have a home, but very fortunately, he did. And we went back to our home. And I looked and didn't really know what to expect. When I'd seen it, there was almost a... It was still standing. And Brother Ryan, I didn't say it didn't lose a few shingles. I didn't say there wasn't some knocks. I didn't say there wasn't some broken windows. But through it all, it was still standing. Through it all, it was still standing. Heaven help me talk to somebody tonight. I'm not saying you ain't going to lose a few shingles in the battle, brother. I'm not saying some things don't happen, even break up a few windows and leave a few scars. But when it's all said and done, you know what you say? I'm still with God's holy people. I'm still, hallelujah to God. I'm still in the house of God. I'm still praising the Lord. Yeah, I've got my bumps. Yeah, I've got my bruises. But I'm still here. I'm still preaching the book. I'm still living the life. I'm still praying. Hallelujah. The storm came. But I lived through it. The trial come. But I survived it. Somebody give him praise. Oh, no, no, no. Hallelujah. Sister Preston, can you help me this evening? I hope you didn't come to this convention this week hoping that somebody's going to pull you out of a crowd. And tell you you're not ever going to have another problem again. You got the wrong preachers, and you know that. But I am here to tell somebody if you'll get on the book, if you'll live in the book, if you'll apply that into your life, ask Lord not only what did it mean then, not only what it means now, but God, what does it mean to me? How does that apply in my hey, some things it may take some time to dwell on and dig in, but God, there's something in that book for me. I wrecked that sturdy building. I expect stormy blasts. But I experience the steadfast blessing of God. Now, Jesse, when it hits, it's not time to hit the panic button. It's time you look back at all the prayers you sown way before you ever got there. And say, Lord, I'm standing on what I put in that family years gone by. I'm standing on what I placed in my home years gone by. And every time you ever gathered those children around you and said, Daddy's going to pray, whether you knew it or not, Brother Jesse, it's one more brick. It's one more two by four. It's one more time. Very softly, Sister Prescott, I'll say this. We got the phone call on a Tuesday night. We were there at Allentown. Aim Keith Speed. Had one son. In fact, Brother Charles Ray Green knows him very well. One 18 year old son, only child. That boy was getting out of hand that night. 
become rather violent with his mother. Brother Speed told me as I sat across the table for him, from him. He said, Brother Zane, I didn't know what to do. I picked up the phone. I dialed that number of 911. It was a young police officer, and I'm not here to, I'm not even here to get into the debate of whether listen, I'm not even gonna go there. But all I know is somewhere in that somewhere in that night, that young police officer pulled that gun. And squeezed that trigger and shot that man's only son. How many times, Brother Hall, did Hell scream in his ear and say, if you just wouldn't have made a phone call, one day you could have had some grandchildren around your knees. He told me, he said, Brother Zane, it was a stormy night. It's black. He said, I was in for the night. He said, I had on a pair of flip-flops. After they took my son's body from me, he said, hearing the screams of my wife from inside that trailer, he said, I stood in the pool for my son's own blood. He said, I lifted both my hands to the living God. He said, warm tears mixed with cold rain fell off my cheek. And these were his words. He said, Lord, you give and you take away. And blessed be the name of the Lord. Brother Hall, Brother Zane just stood back. And I said, oh God, whatever that man needed that night is because he prayed it through well before he ever got there. Stand with me all over this. Oh God. Oh God, speak to us this week. Oh God, speak to us this week. God, speak to us. God, Lord, I don't want tragedy or heartache to hit any heart here. I don't want, God, I don't want heartache or dilemma to come across any soul. God forbid. Oh, God, if it shall, if it shall, if it shall. May every man and woman underneath the sound of my voice be men and women. I don't want to serve foundation. And God, let them pull through because they're on a sure rock and a foundation that's sure. With every head bowed, please, and every eye closed. Friend, I don't know if you're here tonight and you're already facing some things. You may have walked in this house and, and, and it may be soft winds that are blowing in your heart tonight. And I hope that sunshine is raining down in your home. I've lived long enough to know there's going to be another trial out there sooner or later. There's going to be another heartache out there sooner or later. And oh God, let me get on a sure foundation that when it comes, I'll live. Ain't no sense in trying to separate anybody tonight. Every last one of us, I believe, needs to come in around these altars. Can we step up from where we're standing? In church, all the way from the back to the front, can we gather in around these altars tonight? And can we begin to pray? Lord God, let me hear your word and let me do your word. God, let me not only hear your word, but let me do your word. Lord, when I'm in your house, don't let it just fall off my ears. Let it get deep in my heart. Brother Zane, there ain't no way I could do that like that man. Don't you limit God, beloved. 
Jeremiah 32 and 17. Oh, Lord God, the whole thou hast made the heavens and the earth by that great power and stretched out on. And there is nothing too hard for thee. Hallelujah. You can give us grace if we stay on that rock. Oh, God. But I know that the Lord with me and with all oh, first trial. Yes, sir, that may be so. But this is also not the first time I've prayed. Hallelujah. I have been praying about this. I have been, Lord, and when it hits, you will look at those prayers and they'll not go on deaf ears. But you 